Hey, I'm TV. Let's you and me have a chat. This is TV Talks. Hi there. TV here. Welcome to TV Talks. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite hobbies, Warhammer 40k, and one of my favorite armies, Chaos Space Marines. So here we have my tank. It's a Chaos Land Raider. I originally had a small 1,000 point army when I first started in the late 90s, 3rd edition. So I focused on modeling over battling. After getting rid of that army in about 2000, this tank was the only model I kept. I've had this in my college dorm room, I've had it in my house, in my apartment, everywhere. I've always kept this since I was a kid. Over the years it's went through some paint changes and some decoration changes. Um, as seen in some of these older pictures here uh, from 2011. It had the corpse of an ultramarine on the front hatch, but ultimately I felt like that didn't work. So before this exaggerated Havoc launcher here, it had just a standard missile launcher from GW, from Games Workshop. Um, I swapped out the one that it came with, with this, which was an arm from the Transformers movie Thundercracker toy model, which I don't have anymore, but I did use for parts on this and a couple of other models in my collection. Also in this earlier version, I had a slightly modified Bolter Sponson, which is now this custom turret that I used parts from a dome and the gun off another Transformer bludgeon, but I have a ton of Transformers. Originally the head and fins were from the Black Sea Venom action figure toy and I added them to the tank somewhere after getting rid of my army but somewhere before 2005. I don't really remember but as I said I went through this many times and made different modifications and this was one of the modifications I made later on. Uh, though I wasn't actually building, collecting, or playing Warhammer at the time, I still loved to tinker with this model. So from off. The spikes were added in 2010 when I started playing again. I picked up 40k and started a small chaos army which has now grown to the very large one that I have today. Um, and at the time I was using these um, toothpicks on a lot of my models in order to give like spiky bits and whatnot. So it added all to the theme of what my army was at the time. But at the time it was part of my army and I've kept it because even though I feel like it makes other models look cheap on this one, I, I think it looks okay, so I kept it, and it reminds me of that earlier time. Okay, so let's talk about some of the modifications I made to it when I first got it, when it was originally a Space Marine um, Land Raider, and I converted it to my original Chaos Army. Like I said, there's been multiple changes over the years, but let's talk about some of the first ones I did. Um, so let's start with these tendrils here. So these tendrils actually came from a Lasher action figure from the Venom Separation Anxiety toy line. Um, they were originally green, they've gone through some other color changes, but at the moment they're red with black lines kind of through it, um, kind of like the Carnage symbiote, which is what I was going for at the time. Um, and I still like it, so I've kept that color on these for uh, a few years now. Okay, so the eye in the center here, um, it was an idea born out of necessity because when I was given this model originally, it didn't come with the heavy bolter attachment that normally sits on this model. And because I was very inexperienced at the time, I didn't have a lot of parts, I decided to go with the theme of a monster being inside the machine, possessed tank, um, partially because I thought a big eyeball sticking out of it, like peeking out of the, the hull, made it look really cool which is kind of why this started so what I ended up taking believe it or not is a golf ball and I ended up sawing off the top and then sanding that down and gluing it on the hole and then the eyelid that's on top here was actually not me that sculpted it um, the art teacher at my high school at the time was showing me how I could sculpt a, a realistic eyeball 
um, and did this work for me. Um, a very rough work, but I liked it enough that I kept it as is. And, and to this day, even though the paint has changed, the shape and the, the style of the eyelid and the pupil drawn on it would, are both his. Um, he did that work and I've kept that all these years. The arm that I have busting out, out of, of the side hatch um, is from a Marvel Storm uh, model kit that I had as a kid. She stood on this base that looked like a rock with like a whole can busting out of the side. Um, I always liked it, never knew what to do with it, so I ended up using it as the arm that I thought the, or the creature's busting out of the tank, almost getting ready to rip the rest of the tank off and be a giant monster. So I made the doors that are on the sides, side hatch, on either side of the arm busting out. I actually made those using a two-part epoxy. Um, typically you can buy it for like repairing your toilet or repairing fuel lines and things like that. It's just a two-part little putty mix. You can buy stuff that's made for models, but at the time that was much more expensive. The, the stuff I used you get quite a bit for a lot less money and uh, it was my first attempt. It worked. Um, so what I ended up doing was I shaped the putty to look like the hatch doors that already exist in this model and uh, tried to make it look as best I could and then wrapped them while still wet around the arm to give it the illusion that the arm punched through and the metal warped around while it came out. And although it's a bit crude, for my early work this is actually really nice and I think um, they turned out pretty good. That piece is supposed to come off, it's okay. So the back exhaust piece on the, on the back here I added, it actually came from a box of random bits and parts that I used to have as a child. Like when you have all those accessories from your toys, they kind of get thrown at the bottom of the toy box. I used to collect those for scrap pieces to make things with action figures and whatnot. So when I was doing this, I had this very cool exhaust piece um, that ended up cutting and putting into place. Later on, as I got older, one of the modifications I did was actually take my Dremel tool, which was I, I was experimenting with at the time, and try to drill out all the individual uh, holes on the side. Now, it made it a bit of a messy affair, um, but for a chaos tank that's supposed to be rotting and, and falling apart and, and, ru and uh, rusting, these holes being a little iffy doesn't make it look too bad. So I kept it on all the time since. I really thought it, it comes out nice. It gives an extra accent to the back. Um, so that's how that piece was made. Okay, so most people who uh, are familiar with this model will probably ask me why, if you have that arm shooting out, is it coming out, is it coming out on the doors in front instead of the doors behind? Because on this model, these Laz Cannon little sponsons can actually be modeled either in the front hatches and then you can place this panel over here or have the inside door which opens and closes open and exposed or you can glue these in there that either spot. Uh, when I received this I actually got it second hand and um, it was already glued together and the person who gave it to me had already glued these in the rear doors, meaning I only had the the front doors in which to use to sculpt to put the arm through. And I didn't want to break, because of the glue that he used was a contact cement, I didn't want to break these off and, and, and cause damage. So super small note, on the very top here is a small skeleton hand holding a spear. Originally I had planned to do parts of skeletons and faces all over the sides and the tops of this tank to give it a lost souls, pieces, bodies sort of idea. I didn't like the way that was going very early on in that. Um, that got scrapped, but this arm is still there to this day because I always just kind of liked it, kind of nostalgic to me now. The, go the color scheme of the demon inside the monstrous Land Raider here, the arm and the eye, has changed over time. Um, I believe originally they were both green, more like a Hulk, monstrous kind of creature look. And then since, in uh, the last few years, I've gone to more of a humanoid um, look, uh, a skin and flesh color. 
Um, I think it goes a little bit more with the overall theme of a uh, chaos, demonically possessed army, a lot of fleshy bits. Um, so I felt that the green um, was no longer needed in the monster, but I did keep that green color scheme on the venom head, or the second head, and the fins on the side. So um, at one point the monsters kind of coalated, but I've since decided they're two separate entities living in the same hall. So that is that. And again, that piece comes off on purpose, so it's okay. So that's it. 20 years of on and off working and changing went into this model. It's one of my favorite works and one of my oldest. Thanks for watching the show. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments down below if you liked this episode. I literally have a ton of chaos models that I've made and individually modded. So if you're interested, let me know. I'd be more than happy to make more episodes on Warhammer models I have made in my collection. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the little bell icon in the corner to be notified of when I upload new content. Whoa, almost out of coffee. See you next time.